but Apollo refused to let Achilles seize the glory, and with trickery kept Achilles off the Trojans. Disguised as a Trojan warrior, the deadly archer stood in Achilles' path, and Achilles sprang in chase, feet racing, coursing him far across the wheat fields, heading him out towards Scamander's whirling depth as the god led him a little, luring him on and on, always hoping to catch the god with a burst of speed. But all the while, the rest of the Trojans fled in mass, thrilled to reach the ramparts, crowding, swarming in, no daring left to remain outside the city walls and wait for each other. Learn who made it through, who died in battle, no. In a driving route they came, streaming into Troy, any fighter whose racing legs could save his life. So all through Troy, the men who fled like panic fawns were wiping off their sweat, drinking away their thirst, leaning along the city's massive ramparts now, while Achaean troops, sloping shields, shoulder to shoulder, closed against the walls. But there stood Hector, shackled fast by his deadly fate, holding his ground, exposed in front of Troy in the Sakian gates. And now Apollo turned to taunt Achilles. Why are you chasing me? Why waste your speed, son of Peleus? You, a mortal, and I, a deathless god. You still don't know that I'm an immortal, do you? Straining to catch me in your fury, have you forgotten? There's a war to fight, with the Trojans you stampeded. Look, they're packed inside the city's walls. But you, you slipped away out here. You can't kill me. I can never die. It's not my fate. Enraged at that, Achilles shouted in mid-stride, You've blocked my way, you distant deadly archer, deadliest god of all. You made me swerve away from the rampart there, else what a mighty Trojan army had gnawed the dust before they could ever straggle through their gate. Now you've robbed me of great glory. Save their lives with all your deathless ease. Nothing for you to fear, no punishment to come. Oh, I'd pay you back. If only I had the power at my command. No more words. He dashed towards the city, heart racing for some great exploit, rushing on like a champion stallion, drawing a chariot full tilt, sweeping across the plain in easy, tearing strides. So Achilles hurtled on, driving legs and knees. An old King Priam was the first to see him coming. Surging over the plain, blazing like the star that rears at harvest, flaming up in its brilliance, far outshining the countless stars in the night sky. That star they call Orion's dog, brightest of all, but a fatal sign emblazoned on the heavens. It brings such killing fever down on wretched men. So the bronze flared on his chest as he raced, and the old man moaned, flinging both hands high, beating his head and groaning deep, he called, begging his dear son who stood before the gates, unshakable, furious to fight Achilles to the death. The old man cried pitifully, hands reaching out to him. Oh, Hector, don't just stand there. Don't, dear child, waiting that man's attack alone. Cut off from friends, you'll meet your doom at once. Be down by Achilles, so much stronger than you. That hard, headlong man. Oh, if only the gods loved him as much as I do. Dogs and vultures would eat his fallen corpse at once. With what a load of misery lifted from my spirit. That man who robbed me of so many sons. Brave boys, cutting them down or selling them off as slaves. Shipped to islands half the world away. Now there are two, like Caon and Polydorus. I cannot find them among the soldiers, crowding Troy. Those sons Laothoe bore me, Laothoe, queen of women. But if they're still alive in the enemy's camp, then we'll ransom them back with bronze and gold. We have hordes inside the walls, the rich dowry, old and famous Altes presented with his daughter. But if they're dead already, gone to the house of death, what grief to their mother's heart and mine. We gave them life. For the rest of Troy, though, just a moment's grief. Unless you, too, are battered down by Achilles. Back, back inside the walls, my boy. Rescue the men of Troy and the Trojan women. Don't hand the great glory to Peleus' son, bereft of your own sweet life yourself. 
pity me too. Still in my senses true, but a harrowed broken man marked out by doom past the threshold of old age, and Father Zeus will waste me with a hideous death. And after I've lived to look on so much horror, my sons laid low, my daughters dragged away, and the treasure chambers looted, helpless babies hurled to the earth in the red barbarity of war. My son's wives hauled off by the Argive's bloody hands. And I, I, last of all, the dogs before my doors will eat me raw. Once some enemy brings me down with a sharp bronze sword or splits me with a spear, wrenching the life out of my body. Yes, the very dogs I bred in my own halls to share my table, guard my gates, mad, Rabbit at heart, they'll lap their master's blood and lull before my doors. Ah, uh, for a young man, all looks fine and noble if he goes down in war, hacked to pieces under a slashing bronze blade. He lies there dead, but whatever death lays bare, all wounds are marks of glory. When an old man's killed, and the dogs go with the gray head and the gray beard and mutilate the genitals, that's the cruelest sight in all our wretched lives. So the old man groaned and seized his gray hair, tore it out by the roots, but he could not shake the fixed resolve of Hector. And his mother wailed now, standing beside Priam, weeping freely, loosing her robes with one hand and holding out her bare breasts with the other, her words pouring forth in a flight of grief and tears. Hector, my child, look, have some respect for this. Pity your mother, too. If ever I gave you the breast to soothe your troubles, remember it now, dear boy. Beat back that savage man from safe inside the walls. Don't go forth, a champion pitted against him, merciless, brutal man. If he kills you now, how can I ever mourn you on your deathbed? Dear branch in bloom, dear child I brought to birth, neither I nor your wife, that warm, generous woman. Now, far beyond our reach, now by the Argive ships, the rushing dogs will tear you, bolt your flesh. So they wept, the two of them crying out to their dear son, both pleading time and again, but they could not shake the fixed resolve of Hector, no, he waited Achilles, coming on, gigantic in power. As a snake in the hills, guarding his hole, awaits a man, bloated with poison, deadly hatred seething inside him, glances flashing fire as he coils round his lair. So Hector, nursing his quenchless fury, gave no ground, leaning his burnished shield against a jutting wall. But harried still, he probed his own great heart. No way out. If I slip inside the gates and walls, Polydamus will be the first to heap disgrace on me. He was the one who urged me to lead our Trojans back to Ilium just last night. The disastrous night Achilles rose in arms like a god. But did I give way? Not at all. And how much better it would have been. Now my army is ruined, thanks to my own reckless pride. I would die of shame to face the men of Troy, and the Trojan women trailing their long robes. Someone, less of a man than I, will say, Our Hector, staking all on his own strength, he destroyed his army. So they will mutter. So now, better by far for me to stand up to Achilles, kill him, come home alive, or die at his hands in glory before the walls. But wait, what if I put down my studded shield and heavy helmet, prop my spear on the rampart and go forth, just as I am, to meet Achilles, noble Prince Achilles? Why, I could promise to give back Helen, yes, and all her treasures with her, all those riches Paris hauled home to Troy and the hollow ships. Yes, yes, Return it all to the sons of Atreus now, to haul away. And then, at the same time, divide the rest with all the Argives, all the city holds. And then I'd take an oath, 
for the Trojan Royal Council that we will hide nothing, share and share alike the hordes our handsome citadel stores within its depth. And why debate, my friend? Why thresh things at? I must not go and implore him. He'll show no mercy, no respect for me, my rights. He'll cut me down straight off, stripped of defenses like a woman. Once I'd loose the armor off my body. No way to parley with that man, not now. Not from behind some oak or rock to whisper like a boy and a young girl, lover's secrets, a boy and a young girl might whisper to each other. Better to clash in battle, now, at once. See which fighter Zeus awards the glory.